Peace be unto you. Uh, I'm Lale Bakhtiar, and I'm here today interviewing uh, Noreen Ahmadullah, uh, a journalist with the Chicago Tribune. And it's a great honor to be here with you. Thank you, uh, Noreen. Assalamu alaikum. And uh, so I really was interested in how did you get into journalism? How did you decide kind of, that this is what you wanted to do? Um, I was growing up in Toronto, and a friend of mine had just finished um, journalism school. And um, I liked the idea of pursuing history and pursuing many different topics all at one time, like constantly, the idea of constantly learning and being curious. And I figured the only profession that would kind of allow me to keep learning about different things was journalism, because there's just such a breadth of subjects that you can cover in your every day you go in and you learn something new. Yeah, that's true. There's every, yeah. yeah. Well, what interesting stories have you done? What have you kind of remembered as the most interesting kinds of... Um, I've done so many things. I mean, I, you know, I've, I've done some work uh, in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So some of the most interesting stories I've written are actually areas that people have no access to. Um, uh, other than you, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's, I'm trying to remember some stories. So, you know, I've been able to go into parts of Pakistan that are uh, considered tribal areas. Mm -hmm. So I was able to go into Swat, which currently um, there's a fierce battle going on between the military and um, the militants in that part of Pakistan. So I was able to go in there and do some stories on suicide bombings and the effect on victims. Um, in the days after 9-11, I covered the war in Afghanistan, and I was able to go into Kandahar, uh, which was the spiritual capital of the, um, of the Taliban, and I was able to do stories out of Mullah Omar's house and oh just my word. Yeah, well. stuff. I saw pictures. I thought I lost them and I almost had a heart attack because I was like, oh my God, am I ever going to get those photos back? But uh, thanks to technology, I was able to find them. <laughs> so you've had such interesting stories. I mean, going to Pakistan, going to Afghanistan, places where the average, you know, Chicago Tribune reporter would have more difficulty because they didn't know the language and, you know, that kind of thing. So. It's been very interesting, I'm sure, you're kind of working there's, Well, there's some places that I can go. I mean, like in Pakistan, there's parts of Pakistan where language helps, mm -hmm. Urdu helps, but there's other parts where it doesn't help, so I need to hire translators. Oh, okay. And when I've gone into Afghanistan, I've, I've hired translators based on the region that I was going into. Mm -hmm. Some places, there are more Dari, Farsi speakers. Oh, right. In other areas, there are more Pashto speakers. Mm -hmm. So I basically had to hire translators who kind of come along with me and to act as guides and translators at the same time. Mm. And I understand you were working on a book. Is, is that off limits? No, I could talk about it because I even started writing it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if I ever find time, if I ever find time for my work, maybe I can start working on the book. <laughs> but the general, what's the general idea of it? The, the idea is, is, is um, what I'm hoping to do is sort of, um, through my own experiences, talk a little ab about um, the roots of Islamic extremism um, and then now what um, the Muslim community is doing in terms of confronting Islamic mm -hmm. extremism. There's been some efforts, they're very small at this stage, some efforts out of London and Saudi Arabia, surprisingly, um, in terms of how to sort of cure this problem that we sort of find ourselves in mm -hmm. the middle of. So what's being done now and what needs to uh, happen uh, to actually um, get rid of this problem. I, I sort of see it as a, as a disease that's sort of um, eating away at the soul of Muslims. Mm, yes, yeah. So. Well, I certainly hope you can come up with some good solutions that, you know, they can put into effect and can actually kind of st stop this disease from spreading. Right. My, my, my hope is, is that along with um, interviewing some Muslim scholars who can talk more theologically about why uh, we need to fix the problem, that I actually start I do a more of a social, sociological study mm -hmm. and talk more about what needs to be done on the grassroots efforts. So, like within your local community, within your local mosque, you know, looking in your libraries, what do you take out? Mm -hmm. um, within your Islamic schools, your Sunday schools, how to teach a more tolerant, inclusive uh, version of Islam. Yes, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Did you ever run into any kind of discrimination at the uh, Chicago Tribune because you're Muslim or? Um, I guess the question should be more as a journalist, right? Mm -hmm. So in the early days when I first became a journalist, it, was, it wasn't it was easy. When I first graduated, uh, the first job that I had applied for, um, I found out later from another friend 
who had I had written down as a source, um, as a as a reference, that um, the editor at that place had called him and asked him questions about, you know, the fact that I wore hijab mm -hmm. and whether or not I would be too submissive, because the job entailed really dealing with Chicago police, who you know they're a tough bunch. Oh yes. And um, so there was some concern whether I would sort of be able to ask them questions. And the reference at the time said, yeah, Noreen, I mean, it'll be easy for her. What are you talking about? Yeah. Um, that was the only time where I felt that the scarf, you know, uh -huh. led to certain attitudes. Um, but if there is any discrimination, I haven't seen it. It's never been to my face. Mm -hmm. um, I think like in most professions when you're a minority, you just have to work extra hard and you have to be better than everybody else. Yes, that's right.